Welcome back to the Metronome Madness League. We've got the Charming Charm Millions going up against the Sin City Cyndaquils in round number 12. Let's get started. Inte is going to be out on the field for the Charm Millions, and you've got a Jirachi for the Cyndaquils. Charm Millions have been a powerhouse throughout this season. They are not undefeated anymore, but 9-2, which is an incredible record. There goes the laser focus coming from the Jirachi. Watch out for its next move as Entei is going to make its first move of the match as it goes for a Sing. Sing does not work out. Jirachi will stay awake here. Entei is able to move first this time, and this time it goes for Hypnosis. really wants that Jirachi to go to sleep. Uh, Hypnosis does land, so Jirachi will fall asleep this time. Uh, so might not be able to attack. It does stay asleep, so no attack coming from it. I mean, Charmillions really wanted that sleep. We'll see if it's uh, some uh, sort of plan that they have going on here, or did they just want Jirachi not to attack as it stays asleep right there? Intei gonna go ahead with a tail slap. Now that's avoided. How do you, how do you miss a sleeping Pokemon? That was not great at all. As uh, Jirachi avoids that, Intei tries to take another swing at it. And he's gonna go for a Dream Eater. That's what they wanted to do. And that was the plan, it seemed, but that did not do that much damage. Jirachi's still sleeping. So they really went for the sleep just for the Dream Eater move, and it wasn't worth it, I would say. That barely did anything. Wasted a lot of time, because Jirachi is now awake. It's going to go for an eerie spell. That, of course, will land, and Entei takes a huge hit and reduces its PP by three. Now, it's already used more than the Jirachi, so it's going to be running out of Metronome pretty soon, I would say. And this is another bad move coming from that Entei. The Sandstorm will not affect Jirachi. Remember, it is a Steel type, so it's only going to damage itself here from the Sandstorm. That was an extremely bad move by the Charmillions there. Because even if Entei faints, their next Pokemon will be damaged by it as well. There goes the Entrainment coming from Jirachi. Uh, that's going to get rid of Entei's pressure and gives it Serene Grace. Serene Grace being a pretty good ability to have, but Jirachi no longer loses 2 PP with every move that he used. And there goes the Mud Shot. Actually, being sleep was pretty good for Jirachi as it uh, wouldn't have to go through so much PP just to get rid of the Entei there. Entei going to go ahead and go here. And it goes for a play rough. Play rough putting Jirachi in the yellow. Seems that they're just chipping away at that Jirachi, but having a hard time doing a large amount of damage. There goes a stab, Zen headbutt. I imagine that's going to hurt. Yes, it does. It does a lot of damage as Entei is down to 16 HP. Entei will go for its berry here. And it's going to raise its defenses. Maybe a bit too little. Uh, with the Sandstorm, it's definitely pointless. As the sand just takes away more of that health. Any defense boost is not going to help this Entei right now. It goes for the Brick Break. It's going to be neutral against this Jirachi. Actually, a decent amount of damage as Jirachi's in the red as well. Jirachi now for a lick, which actually can take it out. Not a strong move, but Entei is at low enough health. It does faint, and that's the first Pokemon down. Jirachi does lose some of his HP due to the Life Orb, as Giratina is going to come out on the field for the Charming Charmillions. There we go, Giratina out on the field against the Jirachi. It gets to go first, so Jirachi may not even be able to use its last attack. No, it's going to use this time to set up. Maybe not a bad time to set up either. No retreat. Excellent setup move to use in these metronome battles. It's going to get a boost to every single stat at the cost of not being able to switch out. But switching out doesn't really happen in these too much. So that was a good move by the Giratina. There goes the Fury Cutter. Of course, Fury Cutter is not going to work well as they won't be able to use it again. And it's taken out by its own life orb. So Jirachi finally goes down. And the Sandstorm is going to end here. And as the Cyndaquils move on to their second Pokemon as well. They're going to be sending out their Necrozma. As the Dawn Wings Necrozma. Or the Cyndaquils. See if that gives them 
an upper hand at all as Giratina moves first. It goes for the metal sound. So going for the setup. And that's going to, of course, lower the special defense on that Necrozma, which could be very dangerous. We'll see what happens as the Solar Blade is going to come into play. Solar Blade, of course, going to be resisted by the Giratina. However, it can still hit hard. Let's see what happens. Giratina going to go ahead with the Hyper Voice. Doesn't affect the Necrozma. Remember, does have the Ghost Typing. So there goes the Solar Blade. From the Necrozma here, Solar Blade not doing anything at all. That's a waste. Two turn move. Wasted two whole turns just to get a chip away at Giratina's health. Not a good look at all as Giratina goes for the Prismatic Laser. One of Necrozma's own moves and that does a ton of damage. Necrozma and the yellow are ready. That was huge. There goes the Magic Coat. That's gonna fail. Now, this turn, Giratina will have to recharge after the Prismatic Laser, so that does give Necrozma a chance to try to bounce back from that. They go for the Sludge. Sludge, not very effective. So, again, not doing a lot of damage to the Giratina. Oh, but they get the Poison. That could be very big as the Poison chips away at the Giratina's health there. And here we go, Giratina. Routina goes for Psychic Fangs. That does a decent amount of damage. Necrozma, nearing the end of its health. There goes the Bite from Necrozma here. Now, Bite will be super effective in there. That's what they were looking for. A critical hit as well. Great job by that Necrozma with the Poison taking Giratina down into the red. That was huge. I thought it was all going to be over for the Necrozma, but in one turn, they were able to turn things around for themselves. Giratina is going to do a dive this time. And the voice being hit, but it will still take damage from the poison. Well, I don't know if the poison is enough to make it faint. There goes the poison damage. No, it hangs on with 10 HP. This dive could possibly be Giratina's last move. It does land it. The dive hits Necrozma and takes it out. Great job by the Giratina there. Necrozma's going to faint in the poison. We'll take the last bit of Giratina's health as well. This is going to be a close battle as we have one Pokemon left on each team. Thunder is going to come out on the field for the Charmillions. We're going to see a Regilecki come out for the Cyndaquil. So Thunderous versus Regilecki. The Thunder and the Lightning. Reggie Lecky getting to go first. He goes for a burn up. Of course, not a fire type Pokemon, so that's going to fail. And then we have Thunderous going for the Flink. It's going to throw its berry at Reggie Lecky, so it won't be using it. Uh, that probably was a bad move. Berry probably could have helped them while barely doing any damage to the Reggie Lecky. And Reggie Lecky's going to go for the Shadow Claw. Claw does land, and that's a decent hit. Here comes Thunderous now with the slack off. A little early for the slack off, but it is going to heal itself back up. I think that would have been better to wait. Just maybe one more turn if they've taken another big hit. The slack off could have helped them there. Whenever you use those healing moves early, it seems a bit like a waste. There goes the side strike now. Coming from the Regilek. Side Strike lands, put Thunderous right back where it was before the uh, Slack Off. Oh, it, it uses it twice in a row. Unexpected, so it heals itself again. Now the Charmillions are just trolling, I think. As Regilek keeps doing damage and it just keeps getting healed right back up. There goes Regilek again. This time it goes for the Bullet Seed. Bullet Seed going to hit multiple times. Barely doing any damage on the individual hits. Does hit twice. There goes three turns. Even five times. It wouldn't have done that much damage. Just not the best move to use. And here comes Thunderous now. Thunderous goes for the Earthquake. Earthquake is super effective. That could be huge. Reggie Lucky can't take it. And it gets knocked out immediately. 
Thunder's barely did anything in that. It's just one move and Red Zulecki's done. And that is it. Charming Charmillions will win this match. That's going to uh, push them up to 10 and 2. Of course, they were already in the playoffs. They had clinched the spot. But now that the Cyndaquils have lost, that actually gives the EV Hearts a place, uh, a playoff spot. So we have two playoff spots already. You've got the Charmillions in the EV Hearts. We don't know if they're going to keep the seeds that they're curring, currently in, one and two, but we'll see what happens. If you've enjoyed the Metro Madness League, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe to the channel for more, and of course, I will catch you in the next one.